welcome everybody. You might remember me from such debacles as this morning of uh, precision crossbow shooting. <laughs> this is going to go a lot better. Probably. Today we are going to focus on how to throw stuff that's sharp and pointy. And we are going to cover everything we are currently using in the kingdom, knives, axes, spears, and darts. And if there's anybody watching that has a setup at home, we can also tack on at the tail end, kind of a, how are you throwing? And maybe work on some pointers with that if you would like. So with that, let's get started. Like with archery, one of the biggest things as a marshal that's been in it for a while from stress is kind of matched equipment. And there's nothing that'll infuriate a person more than having a bunch of knives and axes that while they they do pass and they do throw and stick, they are so weight mismatched that you have to move for every single throw. That'll just do nothing but infuriate you and you won't ever be able to get a real good consistency out of it. So what I think it's you is whether it be knives, axes, yeah. dart, spears, whatever, find a brand you like and stick mm -hmm. with that. Because just having everything that is pretty well manageable and consistent is really going to help a increase your accuracy your proficiency and cut back on your frustrations where you won't want to just throw them in the garbage and move on from so what we have set up is a normal typical drone weapons target right now we have the the three inch by three inch square target put on there that philippe is working on and promoting today throughout the course of the day. I've already seen a couple of scores posted, so that makes me happy. The size of the target really doesn't matter. I guess the size of the round doesn't matter because it's the size of the target going on it that's gonna kind of be the important part. Right now, the normal universal target is what we are calling the Drone Weapons Inner Kingdom competition or the TWIC. And it's a tricolor circle. There's a three inch circle in the middle with a five inch circle in like the middle of the three concentric circles. And then an eight inch, yes, eight inch circle radius on the very outside. And it's all uniform and consistent throughout the board. So regardless of how big the log is you're putting on it, that'll be the size of target you'll be putting on it. If you have a smaller target, that just means you're gonna be missing out on some of the outside edge, but you'll get better because you have a smaller target to throw at. Now we're going to go on the concept that everybody watching this has never thrown anything before. The first thing that you can do after assuming you've been given permission, all your equipment's inspected and you're getting ready to throw is you'll actually walk up to the target, put your back against the front of it and take seven steps away from it to the line. And that is gonna be a pretty good starting point of where your natural throw will be depending on how big and heavy or light your equipment is, you could work closer or you could work further away from it. But about a seven stride and just a normal stride, you don't need to do little baby steps or big giant, I'm pacing something off strides. Just a seven normal strides will put you right about where your normal throw is gonna be. We're gonna start with strides. And I have disappeared, which is okay. Can you still hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. So once you're faced off, you might 
might take you a little bit to actually find where your sticking point is. And hopefully the video will actually show whether or not I'm hitting tip up, tip down, or dead center. So that one landed tip up. So I'll actually want to take a little step back so it'll rotate further while it's flying through. And that one's stuck, but it's still a little up, so I can go back just a little bit further yet. And it's all, no matter what the show, it's just the mechanics and physics of the weapon as it rotates. Assuming you're going to throw the same intensity with each throw, they're all going to rotate the same way. So you can almost predict, since I'm throwing three knives that are all pretty much the same, that first one landed very point up. If I would have stayed there, every throw after that would have landed about the same. So with that, knowing I need to back up a little bit, I took a couple steps back. You saw it started sticking. You, it is perfectly acceptable once you find your range, put a little marker down on the line so you know where your spot is. And it can be either, in, in this instance, it is okay to, once you have a weapon sticking in the target, to stop throwing and retrieve because weapons must still be sticking for you to score. So if you throw another knife and knock that first one out, both the knives won't score at that point. So a good method of marking your spot is just putting a weapon down on the ground where you were retrieving, and then you know exactly when you come back where your spot is. So I've got my little mark on the ground back here that we can't see, which is a little rubber ducky that I'm shamed of. But we're gonna see if I go back to that mark, will I throw and actually still be sticking or will I have to move a little bit again? You don't have to be good to teach. That's the thing. So if they would have stuck, I was actually at the right spot. Let's try that again and see if I can actually get all of it. So that's pretty much my spot. I know that's where they should land. So throwing two, now yeah, that comes with more friends. The second one we're going to work on will be axes. And this is probably where you're going to find the biggest variance in stuff because there's not a whole lot of actual commercial axes out there. It's a lot of homemade and quasi-professional but very limited stock. So you're going to get a lot of varying weights and sizes. One of the ones I do recommend, especially if you're going to be a marshal and have a lot of children running around, is picking up some of the little mouse hawks. These are perfect for smaller kids. Now, the thing to remember is with throw weapons currently, they must be six years or older to actually throw a knife or axe. And that's just so they have, I know there are many that don't fall in this category, but we had to make a blanket of, they are actually able to comprehend instructions and listen to commands and follow directions safely which is the, the biggest and foremost of all missile weapon things. It's all about safety. But just like with knives, try to find a couple axes that are pretty close to weight. I've got some that are super heavy. This one's actually a camp axe that has 
the hammer head on the back of it. We're going to throw that in the mix. You know what? We're just going to throw there you go. And then we can see how each different axe throws and sticks. We'll do the same thing. Is that it's very rare that your knives and axes are going to weigh the exact same. We go back up to the target. We do our, our facing off. Okay. Now those three axes were all different weights and different sizes. I threw each one the exact same and we saw what happened with it. The first one, by all rights, I should take about a half step back to get it to stick flush. The second one, I think actually I should have taken about a half the full step forward. I think it hit blade down. And the third one was the lightest one and it just, I almost could have gone about two, two and a half steps closer just because it's lighter and it rotates faster. Knowing, knowing your weapons is probably going to be your biggest benefit and help. When you throw. Weapons out of the round, you want to make sure to kind of you're wiggling them up and down to loosen them up, but that's actually referred to as worrying them out of the round. Now we're going to see if two axes that actually weigh the same do any better, or if I do any better. That was thrown the same way from the same spot with a matching set of axes. You can already see not having to worry about that step forward, step back. While the accuracy wasn't there, which I'm okay with, they both stuck pretty close to the same way, which tells me that A, that's my spot where I throw, and B, that these axes, if I'm going to be doing a competition, are probably going to be the ones I'm going to focus with. Now, one of the things we've actually kind of covered early this morning was length of weaponry when we were talking about length of crossbow bullets and stuff. There's nothing saying when you buy that brand new axe, you have to leave the handles the length that they are. My mom's axes are actually. I think we chopped off about three and a half, four inches off the bottom of the handle because she is a little bit smaller framed. She doesn't throw as hard and her rotation just wasn't working with a full length handle. And by shortening that handle, we actually sped the rotation up and she was able to find her distance just by doing that. The, the funny part is actually by making her set of axes to where she stands at her seven paces away, that is exactly for dad and I where we stand right at the 10 foot mark and they just throw beautifully. So that's another thing, depending on how serious and intent you wanna get into it, you can start working and tweaking your uh, length of handles to figure out where you're gonna stand for a 10 foot throw or 15 foot throw or 20 or et cetera. The longer the handle, the slower the rotation is gonna be and the farther back you're gonna stand when you're actually throwing. That is one more thing. So that one was a little over rotated, so it took a step forward.
thing is in the cover, which this is not an ideal target, but it'll work. It'll, it could actually work with steers later too. Is the newest thing we've added to the mid realm repertoire darts. We've got two different manufacturer sizes of darts that we're using currently. We've got these are okay. what's referred to as a number one, which are the short, they're six and a half inches long. And then these are referred to as number twos, which if anybody's ever played like tournament dart ball or indoor leagues with wooden arrows, these are actually the ones you're usually going to be using. So they're a little bit easier to find. They are a total of eight inches long. Weight wise, without actually putting them on a very calibrated digital scale, there's I cannot de decipher any difference in actual weight between the two. Originally, we were just going to have the smaller set, but with people with larger hands or arthritis, it was harder for them to hold. So we went and included the larger number twos, and it really works quite nicely. These are, they were originally intended for indoor use, just to kind of give us something to do throughout the colder months of the, the society where, all right, we want to do something sharp and pointy, but there's eight inches of snow outside and it's freezing. These you can take, and if there's a hallway tucked off somewhere, you can just set them up and you, you can just make an entire day out of just playing with darts. One thing that I'm still working on trying to embrace is the mindset of it's darts. Period gambling is perfectly allowed. As long as there's no real currency going, it was kind of a side intent that this would just be a good way to get people interacting with each other, have a little bit more camaraderie, and just make a fun game out of it. It is really entertaining. As windy as it is out here, I'm not going to guarantee anything on where these are going to go. But throwing of darts. Kind of very, you know what? I didn't cover that with nine directions either. The throwing of darts is about as varied as anybody that throws a baseball or softball or anything else. I prefer to actually just either have one finger on there or I'll have two wrapped around the barrel. And when I'm throwing, I'm actually kind of flicking it a little bit and trying to get a little bit of a rotation to keep it going straight. I know some people that. They'll just hold it by the tip and it's almost like a flick it to it. They hold it way back here and just laser beam into it. Honestly, however you want to throw them is okay. And there were a couple people that had shoulder issues and they couldn't do an overhand throw. It is allowable to do an underhand throw with thrown weapons. And one of the good ways you can actually do that is you just kind of cup the dart in your hand and it's almost like a ski ball motion or bowling and you're just going up. If you can get really good at that, my hat's off to you because that's a consistency that I cannot. And I totally forgot about how you're throwing. So with a knife, and whether it be a homemade job like this, a little bit more of a commercial grade of various makes and models, the way you are actually going to throw, and this is kind of the same with axes too, you're going to take kind of a, not so much a step, but a leaning motion when you're throwing. And as you throw, you don't really want to flick your wrist too much because that'll give you an inconsistent rotation, but you just want the gravity and the weight of the weapon to actually just pull it out of your hand and it'll start doing the rotation. That's pretty much the same with an axe. 
I like to keep my thumb up on top to just kind of keep it a consistent throw each time. And as you bring your arm down, the weight of the ax head is actually going to pull it out and it's just going to make it rotate and fly down the course of the range that way. And that's, that's where the different lengths and weights will actually come in because the different length means you're holding a shorter ax and it'll rotate faster, a lighter knife will rotate faster. These, this style of knife is extremely common, extremely popular. I, I struggle with them because this little bulb right down here at the bottom, it just, it doesn't fit in my hand because naturally I want to throw like this. And this little bulb, when I'm throwing, it, it just kind of catches on everything. So what I've done and what I've seen a lot of people actually do is we'll turn the knife upside down so that this is just kind of sitting right there in your thumb. And once you throw, it just, it looks cumbersome, but it actually comes out in my hand a lot cleaner. So that is another thing of, there's not necessarily a set specific way you have to hold the weapon to do it figure out and find out what works best for you. There's some competitions where we'll actually move you back to kind of an in-between distance and you'll be throwing your ax backwards. And it's kind of a weird thing because when it actually hits and sticks to the target, it's going to be sticking up like that, which is really kind of nice because then once it's sitting there, assuming your ax, your handle is loose enough, it'll stick. And the handle will just work itself out and you'll only have the head sitting there. Which as a cost efficient method is really nice because then you don't have to worry about buying new handles and replacing them. All right, we're gonna, gonna try and see how well darts are gonna fly today. Now, as we saw, outside in this much wind, the smaller darts are actually going to be better. That is consistent with the same, same reasoning with archery. The more feather profile you have, the easier it is for the wind to grab hold of it. And there's just simply not enough weight on the darts to actually counteract a lot of wind. And so the smaller the profile, the more streamlined it's actually going to be. And in windier conditions, the smaller you can go, the better. There's nothing saying you actually have to have fletchings on your dart. Just if you do, they must be feather, leather, or parchment. But that is not an actual requirement to have on a dart. Those are probably the easiest ones to, to learn how to throw just because we're so used to doing it. Now, the, the one that most people are scared of, and don't like shooting, and also most people don't have access to shooting, spear. of commercial spears out there. It is a very, very select group. I actually prefer, these are from Cold Steel and they look rather menacing and detrimental. If you're throwing at straw bales like I am today, just because it's a wider leaf blade, you've got a better chance of actually cutting the strings and making a big giant mess. But just for me, they fit. They throw nice, they're good weight, and I can manage them. Another style is, I believe these are Roman designs. 
Forrester Quentin made these many, many years ago. They're more of a cylindrical, almost bullet looking uh, spear. Really good for hay bales. Even if you hit the string, it's just rounded enough. It'll just kind of push the string off to one side. And these are really nice. And they're pretty short. So this is another good one for smaller frame throwers, children, or younger throwers. It's a really good one for them to kind of work on, learn, and get used to. One of the other styles that's really popular, but geographical, I guess. This is actually a bayonet from an SKS. And they affixed it to an old closet rod and it, it genuinely leaves about the smallest damage profile of any of the spears. It's still got a little bit of a flat tip to it, so you have the potential of cutting your string, but not, not super bad. Which I think this will be the one I'll be throwing most today, just so I don't have to clean up on that. I will be using Quentin's kind of as a demonstration. One of the big key factors on throwing spear is you want to find that balance point, which in this case, we've actually marked so it's easier to handle. And you're just going to notice how it's just sitting perfectly level. We move it too far back, it starts going everywhere, but nice, good center balance. And what that is going to do is when you're throwing, and we're going to throw it just like we do knives and axes. It's going to be straight out away from us. One of the biggest problems with throwing any of the weapons, but especially with a spear, is a lot of people that have done softball or baseball, they do that crossbody throw. And depending on how far away and just how light or heavy your spear is, what will actually happen is by the time it gets to the target, it's either going to be hitting it like this, or I've even seen them just hit dead flat on their side. So what we're going to try to do is just throw straight out and just kind of launch it. I actually prefer, depending on how far away the target is, if it's a soft target like this, minimum is 10 feet. So you want to find that balance point and just wrap your hand around it and go from there. If you're using a hard target or your competition is your hay bales are a little bit further back, what I'll actually do is I'll move the balance point a little bit back. And so actually when I throw, because there's going to be more weight in the back, it's actually going to kind of lift the spear up and it's going to give me a little bit extra distance to make it through that target. Having that mechanic in your head really all cues to kind of throw about the same. And as we actually, it's, it's a little backwards from what knives and axes are. The biggest and heaviest spear actually is the highest, which means it would have gone the farthest. Whereas the smallest and lightest spear actually travels the least distance and hit the lowest. I'm sure there's a physics to that and I don't know why. Other than the only thing I could say is, well, you threw that one lighter. No, I didn't, so I don't know. Hard to do. I'm just going to find a center balance. 
that one I kind of flicked my finger a little bit as I let go, and you notice the angle that actually landed into the target. Exactly, half out right where I wanted to be. That pretty well covers how to throw just about everything we're going to commonly see and use in the society. So at this point, we can either open up for questions or if anybody has their own range set up at home and wants to kind of have people look at and see their, their body mechanics and where they stand and everything to get a little tips or pointers or ideas and advice, you're open and happy and ready to do it. Or we can so, the conversation time. Well, I was gonna ask about, um, just a little bit more about the physical body mechanics as you're throwing a knife or a uh, ax. Okay. So I've read various things about, you know, the. The right foot forward, the left foot forward, you know, at an angle, stand on the back foot, shifting to the right foot, all that kind of thing. I guess, could you talk a little bit through kind of the, that ideal body mechanic? We can get the zone in on my feet. Kind of a personal preference type setup. And Dad and I, if we're using mom's axes because they're a little bit smaller and lighter, we'll actually just stand. We do typically have our right foot forward because we're right handed, but we'll just stand there and just kind of. There's very little motion with it. With normal. Back leg will usually stay stationary. And you'll be taking a step with your lead off foot. Now I've I've seen a lot of people that they'll actually do the other way and lead off with their back foot. And it's about the same end result. Like you get a much bigger step and stride with that. Because you know, if I'm standing here and I'm going to throw, it, I mean, it's not a big step at all. It's maybe one, the distance of one of your the throwers. It's actually about the same type of mechanic. While not nearly as necessary, but with dark, kind of same. 
you notice, my back foot is not moving. And it's all just, I'm leading off and taking that little step. That goes this way. And what that'll actually do is that'll help a little bit of the momentum the weapon you're throwing hit them the target versus just kind of standing here and if you're just stay stationary you're going to have to use a lot more arm strength and it's going to wear you out a lot faster robert would you say that most good throwers have their throwing arm and the leg on that side of their body forward as opposed to like a baseball where your throwing hand and your throwing foot is at the back? Typically, yes. It's going to be a lot of, if you're right-handed, you're going to have kind of your back foot as your anchor and your right foot is going to be kind of your stepping foot. And same with if you're left-handed, you're going to have arm forward your right foot is going to be back and your left foot's going to be your forward stepping foot it's the, the reason baseball does that is because you are trying to put as much boom into the throw as you can you just don't need that with throwing weapons let the weapon do the work for you you're just trying to get it in the air the actual weight of the weapon will rotate it down and by having less movement on you you can actually get a more repeatable and consistent throw and at the very least it'll be a lot more enjoyable because you'll actually be able to stick in the target regardless of where it's that missing and constantly searching for stuff that turns into a frustration and when you start throwing super, super hard, you're going to get yourself tired. You're going to start kind of getting crazy and it's just going to lead into an un unhappy, frustrating time. Now I've seen there are some and it's just how they, they throw. I've seen some where they do kind of the, the right hand, they got the right leg leading forward and then they take that stride with the left it's big it's unnecessary in my opinion but that's just how they're comfortable now one of the big issues with if you're going to stand with the, your off foot forward it's just the way your body sits you can feel a lot more tension going across your chest when you're kind of off pitch like this. And everything is just, just standing here by itself. I can feel everything wanting to kind of pull me this way. Whereas like this, I know everything's just kind of right. I know I'm gonna be throwing with my right, my left or my right foot's forward. Everything's just kind of pulling me correctly, but I've got, this one side of my body closer to it. So it's actually pulling me straighter to the target. I'm also just really good. So you're weight shifting, you're, you're basically like in a golf swing, you're shifting your weight from your rear foot to your front foot? Yes. Yep. I mean, there's, there's a lot of sports that are pretty, pretty common and useful for throwing weapons that you don't quite expect you can carry over into the sport. The biggest thing is just softball and baseball players have the hardest time just because you want to do that crossbody throw and it, 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 it is functional. That's actually how I first started to throw. And I remember one of my very first early Penzics, 
getting yelled at by the marshal on the line because I was essentially just strong arming him into the target. Now, granted, I put three axes in a space about like this, but I also broke his target in half. I, I had to learn really quick a new way to throw, which kind of worked off in the better end because I didn't realize just how much improper body stance plays into stuff. And by just doing the cross arm, I'm almost chopping a tree down motion to the more, I guess, disciplined version of, I'm, I'm gonna sit here and actually use my whole arm to sight down and do, do it correctly. I've actually gotten a lot more enjoyment out of it. I've gotten a lot better at it and everybody, it's just all around better. <laughs> but it's kind of the same, same venue on a lot of other aspects of life. Everybody has their own natural feel on how they do stuff. So essentially this is a good starting point and hopefully you can tweak it to your own standards as you go along. All right, the wind's actually letting you guys hear me out here. It's blustery. For anybody yeah. looking for them, let's see if I can get it up here. These are from the Witty Manufacturing Department. They're the official tournament from Philadelphia. You can get number ones and number twos from them. Currently about the only company I know of commercially that's selling the darts. But that being said, we kind of brought them back from light or the death. At one point, Apex was one of the only other two manufacturers of the number twos. Witty bought them out. And since we've started picking up darts in the kingdom, I've actually been kind of talking with them a little bit. Their, their sales have gone through the roof and we've, we've essentially saved the company from going bankrupt. So that's, that's kind of cool. It's sad and disturbing, but kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> Even though they won't answer my question of, can I just buy the dicks? got to buy the whole thing. Mm. All right. Can Anybody you show how to throw a dart underhanded? Ah. So this, this is one of the only times I actually will recommend standing backwards where your off leg is going to be forward just when you're throwing underhand because if it's going to be forward, you've got a much better chance of actually hitting the inside of your leg with whatever you're throwing. And you can do this with darts, axes. I've not seen anybody do it with knives, but you could. We're just going to take the dart, we're kind of cupping it in our hand. And it's, if you know how to do ski ball, it's pretty, pretty close to it. If it's windy outside and all you have are the bigger ones, it actually does help a little bit. Just because the angle of everything, it's, it's more of an inline bullet versus the overhand lob. So you just cup the dart into your hand. Yep. Just hold it like that. Kind of use your thumb to hold it down and then as it leaves, just, just kind of launches right out of your hand. Okay. And if you practice it enough, just like everything else, you can get pretty good at it. My, my underhand game is poor. <laughs> But out of, out of all of my crew, I've only got one that didn't 
six in target. So I'm pretty good. Next year they they flew better underhand than they did overhand. So that's another a good way to have you're, you're figuring on if you're outside in a windy day, which way am I going to throw? Okay. Cool. When I finally get my darts, I will try that. And it's throwing underhand is really nice if you've got a lot of rotator cuff issues. Because I had two people the very first time we brought this out up that uh, 12th night that they were able to throw about three darts. And then they're like, it's, it's just grinding. I can hear you. Met up with them a couple months later and I said, try underhand. And after doing that, they were the biggest supporters of it. So I might right. go in underhand, it's at least all the grind and stress on the rotator cuff. It's just, it's just a lot of, a lot more fun. Like, okay. Yeah, because it's either that or I'm going to have to really learn how to be a righty. <laughs> That's, throwing underhand is a lot easier than switching hands. Does that underhand work for the the metal spikes that you know the the like the ninja type things that are not throwing stars but just a, a double ended spike? Would that underhand throw work for those too? Essentially, like that. Pretty pretty close. Um, theory I want to say yes I don't see why it wouldn't that turns almost full completely flat by the time it hit the target and I'm maybe eight feet away don't tell the marshal he's in charge that I'm a little too close. <laughs> but I would imagine I've never actually played with any of those, so I'm not familiar with them. Are they legal in SCA thrown weapons to have those spike type darts as a as a sort of a surrogate to a knife? Without seeing them, I'm going to reserve. I would I would default probably if I'm understanding what they look like. But I mean, it's, it's just pretty much a big chunk of metal, isn't it? Or are you talking about the plumbatas? Uh, um, I don't know that, but just just think like a like a big seven inch long nail with points on both ends. Oh, where'd you go? I lost you, Syrian. Yeah, just think think like a big seven inch long nail that's got points on both ends. Usually they're black and they're kind of cylindrical with needle points. Oh, the torpedoes. Yeah. Um, in theory, yes, those should be legal. I, they're legal in the mid realm. I'm sure some kingdoms will probably have stricter restrictions. We, without having actually dealt with any of them, you might actually run into a couple marshals that will have you dull up one of the tips just because there's the fear of jamming it into your palm as you kind of handle it and throw it. I would think they would throw pretty good underhand. The big problem is they're gonna be kind of a uniform weight all the way across. And it's darts are just pretty much miniature crossbow bolts. You want to have that one end that's heavier than the other to kind of keep it going forward without toppling over itself. So by having something that's kind of a uniform weight all the way through, you might have a little bit of an issue, but I don't really see why it wouldn't work. I don't have anything round like that to actually try and throw. All my stuff is flat. So it gives me a weird hold. Um, 
Yeah, I'm going to say it, it should work. Because even if it kind of rolls off your fingers, you're essentially just going to be giving it a rifling through the air like the helix of fletching or rifling in a gun barrel. The, the big difference is you're not rotating, that the, the point that you release stays point forward and you're not having to deal with the distance and uh, uh, the rotation factor to be able to get to a stick. Right. With that, it's all going to be based off of how far up on the upswing you throw and how hard you throw. So longer distances might give you a little bit of a challenge with it, but I would think at 10 feet, it should be, should be doable. And throwing stars are not legal in the SCA, right? Correct. Throwing stars, those weird little playing card I won at the state fair type things. By, by broad definition, things with multiple sticking points. Now, there there is kind of a weird gray area where you can throw axe heads that have multiple sticking points, chakras, which are just like the, the old Xena rings from the 80s. The big thing you have to do is you have to tell the marshal which point you will be sticking. You don't get to just wing it down there and, well, I'm throwing a circle. It's going to stick no matter where it hits. There has to be a, a defined scoring edge. Otherwise, that's just flat out cheating. <laughs> but it's a lot of it is more based off of modern rules and regulations than actually SEA. We weren't the ones that said ninja stars are outlawed. The federal government told us that. It's kind of like one of the big areas of questionable stuff right now are society has passed plumbatas, which are the giant Roman throwing darts. Plumbata, yep. Yeah. But just by a physical definition are a homemade lawn dart, which we know the federal government has said you can't buy. So therefore, if you can't buy them, you shouldn't be able to have them. Well, we it turns into a weird gray area where we're actually allowed to use them and play with them. We just got weird rules on how we yeah. can get them. Short throwing spheres that we can do. No, no, this we're talking lawn darts. Yes. Yeah, from batter. Which essentially just, yeah, think of this just. Almost it's two feet big. Words. I mean, three words. It's because it's on Zoom. Oh. Which currently at the time, I don't know if the new Earl Marshall is going to work on getting those in or not, but plumbatas are not passed in the mid room at this time. I've got a set. I've played with them. I'm not entirely sure what I want to do with them because they, they really are, they, they don't stick in any target per se, but they're great if you've got ground targets, like especially like buckets, hoops, wells, things that you can place out at different distances. They are great to just lob into, kind of like you used to with lawn dart. So I don't quite know if and when they ever do get passed how to work those into the range because they just because they're all basically going to be an underhand toss you can get you can get some pretty good distance with them and it's going to be questionable on how many throw weapon ranges actually have the range for them. but we'll we'll work on that when that time comes around and in your last five minutes, can you cover Ed Lottles? No, that's archery. 
<laughs> Sorry, Abri. <laughs> um, I actually don't have it here. It's still at mom and dad's. It's mechanically, you're going to throw an at level the same way you are a, a spear. It's going to be, again, biggest problem is you're going to want to do a cross body with it, but it's just going to be a straight out and you're going to have the atlatl, which is actually the handle of it, holding the dart. All right. So you're going to be holding the atlatl like this, and you're going to have the dart sitting on top of it. And it's going to be a straight arm and then fling. And one of the biggest problems you're going to have is you actually have to kind of hold down the dart on the front end or else when you come back it's just going to flop around everywhere remembering to get that finger out of the way and then it is just straight just kind of like a, a throwing a ball or anything if you throw up it's going to go farther if you got a pretty good arm and you just do a line drive with it it can just almost go straight into whatever you're throwing at. And back before I blew my shoulder up, I was just playing around with them 80, 85 yards, just playing. And that was with very rudimentary equipment. So if you get into some of the commercial and professional grade stuff, I know people that can throw a dart 120, 150 yards, not even bad at eye. And it's, yeah, it's, it's probably one of the reasons why we decided that if it ends up being allowed in the Middle Kingdom, it'll be on the archery range. We decided that Adelaide is launched just like an arrow. <laughs> we felt that that was good enough reason. Yep. And as as you have but Euro Marshall's not allowing it at this time. We'll see if the new Earl Marshall decides to allow it, in which case, if he does, we'll have to start working on getting the rules. Yeah. So I'm actually going to be reaching out to Atlantia to see if they'll allow me to plagiarize. Atlantia, Eldemir. I don't know if North Shield has anything official in the books or not. I don't recall seeing anything in their handbook. Yeah, I know they got, they used to have a big contingency of them up there, but I don't think everything was ever written official. Yeah, but I, I definitely remember Atlantia having it in their handbook and it was distinctly within their archery marshal's handbook. Was it? So I was gonna reach out specifically to Atlantia um, primarily because um, Astrider is interested in learning and she lives close enough to Atlantia because she's in South Oaken. Okay. And so it's convenient to for her to learn, you know, to just cross over and learn directly from them. Yeah. So so we were gonna go ahead and go with that route. That way we can get some cross training that way. <laughs> so that that was the plan was to just go ahead and get her to to go straight over there and and start learning directly from the Atlantia group and and then we would doc, you know basically plagiarize their handbook <laughs> with the Atlanta yeah. section yeah I, that's kind of what I did with darts I, I went to Ontier and I asked can I steal these and use them and they're like yeah sure go for it yeah, exactly. So, so I'm I'm gonna be reaching out to them shortly. I'm gonna talk to Sir Marcus first and ask him what his feelings are. And that, but I'm gonna start at least getting the ball rolling to to get you know get things going as far yeah. as rules, so that I can at least have something in place. It, if and when it's, he does. It's better to have stuff prepared and waiting rather than, hey, here's a new toy you get to play with and scramble and try to figure out how to do it. Exactly. Work.